Welcome to Figure Feedback, my name is Jeremy. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about the upcoming Elegoo Centauri Carbon. That's gonna be their first enclosed Core XY 3D printer that they revealed back in June at Rapid TCT 2024. Now, since then, I kind of forgot about it because they haven't been saying anything about it, even though it's supposed to at least go on sale next month in September, perhaps even release, we don't know yet. But it fell off my radar until Elegoo posted this video on Instagram. So let's take a look at it. So while you look at this video, I'm gonna read the description. This says, rugged, durable, and precise, featuring a top frame and chassis, crafted with integrated die casting along with four reinforced aluminum alloy pillars and stainless steel side panels, the Centauri Carbon's design greatly enhances assembly precision and stability, providing a solid foundation for high-speed printing. Follow our page for more details. So not really much information about the printer itself. However, they're really touting the build quality of this and they're making it seem like it's going to be something that's going to be sturdy and strong and well, premium for that matter. So we're going to be learning more about this printer as the weeks go on. I think that the marketing machine is starting to ramp up on it. But in case you didn't know too much about this machine, I did want to go over some things that have already been revealed in one way or another since it's been announced and give my thoughts and opinions about some of those things and where Elegoo is headed with this particular printer. So when this first got revealed, one of the biggest questions that people had about it was, what's the build volume on this printer? Because, you know, we like big printers, like to make big prints, the option at least, to make a more things on the build plate or just make something bigger in general. And the initial hope was that it was gonna be bigger than the competition out there today, mainly Bamboo Lab, that's the main competitor. So according to some reports of people who've been at the show, as well as some photos that were posted on social media, at least at that time, it appears that the build volume for this printer is going to be 256 cubed, which basically makes it the same size as a Bamboo Lab printer. Now, I know that can be disappointing because there are advantages to coming out and naturally having a larger build plate than the competition who's already been proven to be very reliable. But this is Elegoo that we're talking about. They tend to release at least a few different versions of their printers with larger build volumes. You look at the Neptune 4, you have the Plus, and then you have the Max. Neptune 3 series did something similar. So I think it stands to reason that the Centauri Carbon is probably going to have another version or two with a larger build plate. But the one that they showed at Rapid TCT is just kind of standard at this point. So while that is not the greatest news in the world, let me take you to an interview that was done with this website, All3DP, back in June. And this is with the co-founder of Elegoo, Kevin Wang. And he said some details about the printer that may interest you and may even turn you off. Now first, let's talk software. As it says right here, the Centauri Carbon's proprietary firmware and a fork of Orca Slicer is in the works. The company is placing emphasis on printing quality profiles and presets to help new users of the printer and following complaints with recent releases, investing in additional software development engineers to ensure a better marriage between the firmware and hardware. Partic quote, particularly with the Centauri, it has to be stable. I am curious exactly what they mean when they say following complaints with recent releases. Now, maybe they're talking about the Neptune 4 series. You know, I personally own a Neptune 4 Plus and that experience has not been the best. It's been kind of a buggy, glitchy, inconsistent printer for me. I know that some people really love it, you know, but in a lot of cases, it requires you to do things that I personally don't think you should ever have to do as a consumer who spends hundreds of dollars on a printer, such as putting a whole new firmware on it or doing some mechanical and software tweaks, things that Elegoo should have done in the first place in order for you to get a printer that just does the simplest things correctly. 
I don't think you should have to do that, especially if you're paying for it, but maybe they're talking about that. Or maybe they're talking about the Orange Storm Giga, which was their huge 3D printer that was crowdfunded, it was successful, but then when we started seeing videos about it, it started to make people feel nervous because of some software issues that would sometimes even destroy components on the printer because it's just not optimized the way that it should be using certain parts that probably weren't appropriate for a printer of that size so maybe they're starting to learn from that hopefully they learn from stuff like that in the neptune 4 to make something that is a lot more stable out of the box we'll see let's take a look at some more information about this printer from this exact same interview now this next part i think is a bit concerning it says those waiting with bated breath for any indication of multicolor or multi-material systems to accompany the Centauri can exhale. It isn't likely to happen. Refreshingly, Elegoo isn't in a rush to offer such a product. Now here's a quote. We want to make sure the Centauri is stable and works really well. We have a model working internally, but the performance is not as good as we expected. So we're seeing that maybe we'll have to wait for the second generation. Now, I think that this is a problem. I think that not having a multicolor system ready to go for this new printer is an issue for a big popular company like Elegoo. And the reason for that is, I'm gonna use a video game analogy. So if you're into games and if you do MMOs and stuff like that, you'll be familiar with a term called a DPS check. And what a DPS check is, is when you're fighting a boss, for example, you have to do a certain amount of damage in a certain period of time in order to continue. And if you can't do as much damage as you're supposed to, the boss is going to beat you instantly and you're going to have to start over. The only way you can beat the boss is if you can meet the requirements of that DPS check. Can't continue otherwise. And in this year, 2024, with these printers, I think that having a multicolor filament system for your printer is the DPS check. If you can't meet that, meet something that your biggest competitor has already done and has been the master of for years, you've got a problem on your hands. Now, I'm not saying that every printer needs to have its own multicolor filament system, especially when you're talking about the smaller companies, but for the bigger ones, the biggest players in the market, such as Elegoo, Anycubic, Creality, I think those companies do need to have this. And it's not necessarily because multicolor printing is required or it's needed or something that everybody has to do. It's really just a showing of how far you've come as a company to basically keep up with the times, to keep up with your main competitor, the DPS check of the 3D printing community and space right now is multicolor printing. And if you don't have that, well then what's stopping a customer from saying, well, they have it over here, this other company has it over there, but you, Elegoo, don't have it. They need a reason to go to you. And right now, multicolor printing is not on the table, so that is a huge issue, I think, for securing potential sales. They're gonna have to do something to make up for that. One of those things might be pricing. So if you look at this quote down at the bottom, it says, when it does launch, quote, you will notice the price. So if the price is low enough, maybe that'll be enough to sort of offset the disappointment of not having that multicolor filament system, but it's gotta be a really competitive price. What price could that be? Well, for one, it cannot be more or it, or it cannot match the uh, P1S's price. So it can't launch at like $600. I think that's gonna be too much money. I think for this printer, it should launch sub $500, maybe, 450 as a regular price and then they can do that early bird pre-order thing that a lot of these companies do and you can get it for for an even better price but i think that's going to be necessary because they don't have that multicolor filament system but then i also think that this printer needs to offer something that the other competitors don't have since they're already lacking with multicolor i'm going to keep just hammering that down because that is the DPS check. I think this printer needs to offer something like uh, a heated chamber, for example, something that their other competitors can't say that they have 
at this point, at least not all their competitors. And I'm not talking about just letting the chamber heat from, you know, the heat generated from the bed. No, I mean something that is actively heating so that you can go into their customized Orca Slicer software and then, or on the printer itself and just say, I want this chamber to be 60 degrees Celsius. And then you'll be able to do that. I also think that the hot end of this printer needs to go up to a uh, pretty high temperature, uh, let's say 350 degrees Celsius in order to print those high temperature materials. And this will be something for the people who are more into the functional side of 3D printing to sink their teeth into. Maybe some people who are making custom components for let's say like cars or motorcycles or something like that. Things that'll be a little bit hard to find. They can print with those tough, rugged, temperature resistant materials that you can only get if you're printing with a printer that has a hot end temperature that goes above 300 degrees Celsius. So I think they need to have those two things. I also think they need to implement things like a quick swap nozzle, similar to what you would get like on the Bamboo Lab A1 or the Flash Forge Adventure series. No tools required, no tools necessary. You know, you just pull it out, stick another one back in there. Just make it really nice and simple, make it really nice and easy for people to do. Those type of premium features while keeping the price nice and low, then maybe this printer has a shot at uh, catering to, of course, the hobbyist, minus the multicolor aspect of it, but more so to the more professional-ish side of things for a lower cost, just for the fact that they'll be able to print with those higher temperature and more durable materials. But also having a lockdown proprietary software that apparently isn't based on any other kind of open source software could be a problem to some people. You know, in the 3D printing space, folks love their open source stuff. So maybe that will be a deal breaker in this case, or you know, maybe you know, there's also people who just don't care about what firmware it's running, what software is running, you know, as long as it works. That's the only thing that really matters. But if you're into just really tinkering with the software, you want to make your own customization. You want to do your own thing. You just want to mess around with stuff. Then this would be something that you probably wouldn't want to mess around with. But then again, you know, you got Bamboo Lab printers as well, and that's not necessarily open in all cases. So I mean, maybe it's not as big of a deal as it seems. But I do know that some people really um, are uh, serious about that kind of stuff. So that's probably just a deal breaker in and of itself. I think Elegoo definitely has a lot to prove with this printer. Coming off of the response of the Neptune 4 series and the problems that it had, and as well as the Orange Storm and the issues that it had, when it comes to FDM 3D printing right now, the track record in recent years isn't great. So this is going to be the redemption for Elegoo. And they're already starting behind the pack. So I want this printer to be successful. It helps all of us. It helps drive innovation and helps drive competition. And ultimately that helps for prices to be lowered for us. So I want it to be successful, but based on what I'm seeing right now, I think that they've got quite a bit to prove. So this was just a little information I cobbled together. Like I said, it's not new information, but if you didn't know about it, it's new to you. So uh, let me know down in the comments. What do you think about this printer so far from what we do know about it? Is this something that you'll even be interested in, maybe even given a shot? And what do they need to do with it in order to entice you to purchase this printer? Let me know down in the comments. So I'm pretty sure that things are going to be coming out about this printer very soon. We only have a little bit less than a month before this thing is going to go on sale, supposedly. So we'll know more soon. And when we do, I'll definitely let you know about it. So be sure to subscribe to learn more about that and other things as well, 3D printing related. And until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.